Good morning, Lake Nokomis Lutheran Church. This is Pastor Sarah Spohr, and we are glad that you are here to join us for worship today. Today, our worship is provided to you by the leaders of the Minneapolis Area Synod. We are grateful for their leadership in this Christmas season, and we are excited to introduce you to the work of our leadership in our greater church. So we are happy to have that for our worship today. I also wanted to point out to you that um, the Lake Nokomis Lutheran Bible Scrapbook is ready and available, and the worship, uh, the scripture for worship you will hear today is in this scrapbook. And so um, we are grateful to all those who have contributed words and pictures and visuals for us to engage with the, the readings in this season ahead. If you don't have a Bible scrapbook yet, you can contact the church office. We will make sure to mail one to you, or we can send you a PDF that you can just print right at home. What a great resource for us and, and thank you to our contributors. Just a reminder, there is no Faith in Life or Zoom coffee hour this week or next week. Uh, just taking a little break uh, for the holidays and then we will be back, be back on January with 10th with lots of good information and conversation for us in our life in Christ together. So Merry Christmas. Welcome to worship. Christmas and welcome to worship. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for your ministry as a part of the Minneapolis Area Synod. We are so grateful as a Minneapolis Area Synod staff to walk along with you as you graciously invite folks to your life-giving Christian community and work together for, for just and healthy neighborhoods and communities. We thank Christ Lutheran here in Blaine for hosting this service and also the amazing Runman Family Band. Yes! We have Svea, who you might have heard on Spark House as a voiceover, yes, and Pavo, who we're so proud to call as a member of our Synod Council, and Don, who works at 1517 Media to help us faith formation do work all, all over the Synod and the country and the world, and Jonathan Runman, who happens to be a candidate for Word and Sacrament Ministry here in our Synod and is currently serving as an intern at St. Stephen's in Bloomington. Thank you for your gifts. Thanks, Christ Lutheran. And... Let's worship and sing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all you nations rise, join the triumph. is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's Godhead see, hail incarnate deity, pleased is man with us to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn. 
son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. While he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die, born to raise each child of earth, born to give a second. Amid the troubles and fears of this world, let us confess our sin and welcome God's forgiveness, grace, and love. Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive, Forgive our, our lack, lack of faith and trust. trust. Your son was born in the poverty of a stable. Forgive, Forgive our, our neglect, neglect of the poor. The shepherds left their flocks and went to Bethlehem. Forgive, Forgive our, our selfishness, selfishness and complacency. With great joy, the angels proclaimed, Do not fear, for I bring you good news of great joy. Today is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. In Jesus, who is Savior, Christ and Lord, our sins are forgiven. May you know the peace which the angels sang from the heavens. Indeed, God's forgiveness is good news of great joy. Amen. Jesus, the bright morning star, shines light in the world. By day and by night, he shines for all to see. Jesus was born in the midst of injustice and poverty, that the world may see the justice and righteousness of God. God so loved the world that God sent Jesus, so that all might who believe in him may not perish but have eternal life. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of our lives. Sing to God a new song, a song of hope, joy, and peace around the world. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God of heaven and earth, you have thrown a lifeline to us in the darkness, a beam of light that shines through Jesus. Though born in a manger, he is the firstborn of all creation. Through, though crucified on a cross, he is the Lord of life. Fill us with the wonder and joy of his presence in the world and in our hearts. Amen. Amen.
Old Testament reading, Isaiah 61, chapter 10, through chapter 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. For the nations shall see your vindication and all the kings of your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that is the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of God. Here ends our Old Testament reading. The New Testament reading is from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. The word of the Lord. Well, hi, kids and um, grown-ups who may be with the kids. Um, it's good to be with you today. And I just have to share with you um, what a great day I have been having so far. Uh, I got up this morning and went outside, went out to my backyard and smelled all the fresh flowers uh, that were in the flower garden. And then I went over uh, to our vegetable garden and I picked out uh, some uh, 
tomatoes and onions, and I made myself a really good omelet um, for breakfast. And when I go home later, I'm going to be uh, mowing the lawn because the grass is growing so fast these days, don't you think? Um, and then I'm hoping maybe our family can go swimming later. It's a, it's a warm day. The lake is just beautiful. Now, um, if you were here with me, and I wish you all were here with me, you might be looking at me saying, what is this guy talking about? And I think some of the people in here who are with me are saying that as well. All right, I realize we're about as far removed from that kind of a season uh, as we can be right now. There's, there's not really fresh grass. There's uh, really brown grass. Uh, and Vegetables are not growing. But you know what? The season will change, and we will have some of those things again that we love. Uh, because God promises that we will. God has made our creation that way, with seasons. There was a writer of, of a book in the Bible named Isaiah, we just heard Pastor Kelly read about it, um, where Isaiah said, just as the earth brings forth its shoots, like shooting green grass and other growing things out of the ground, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so does God bring forth great things for us, um, righteousness and joy and praise. And we are so in need of those signs of things these days, aren't we? Righteousness and praise. Righteousness means good relationships. God has signs all around us of what his love does for us. And there's no stronger sign of that than what we are celebrating in this season, the birth of God's Son. God sent this sign. God became one of us so that we would never forget that we are loved by God. And that's mainly what I want you to remember today in this season, that uh, even though we don't see the green grass, we don't see the vegetables, we don't see things growing, we do see a baby Jesus who will grow and who will become a man who will do healing and teaching and will ultimately die for us, but then rise again because of God's amazing love for us. God promises us and wants us to know he will never leave us. So let us pray and give thanks to God and praise to God. Oh God, thank you so much for sending your son, for surrounding us with reminders of how much you love us and will never leave us. Please help us to be signs for other people of how much you love us as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Cold December flies away At the rose-red splendor April's crowning glory breaks While the whole world wonders On the blessed tree blooms the reddest flower On the tree blooms the rose here in love's own garden Full and strong in glory In the hopeless time of sin Shadows deep had fallen All the world lay under death Eyes were closed in sleep joy of our hope, highest hope of our hope's bright dawning, Son beloved of heaven. Now the word has come to bloom, and the world awakens. In the lily's purest flower dwells a wondrous fragrance. In its heavenly brightness, sweet light. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul also. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with the wisdom, and the favor of the Lord was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, grace and peace be unto you from our Savior, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. They weren't young anymore, Simeon and Anna. Simeon was really ready to die, and Anna was both old and a widow. But they were there in the temple at the end of the birth story recorded in the Gospel of Luke. Actually, Anna and Simeon join a rather surprising group of people from the first two chapters of Luke's Gospel. A surprising group all there as the first witnesses to Jesus' birth. There's silent Zachariah and barren Elizabeth, Mary and Joseph, shepherds from the fields, and now Anna and Simeon. This group they're the aged, the widowed, the barren, the marginalized. It's a pretty inclusive bunch in gender, in status, in religious piety. And most surprising of all, it's a newborn baby who overwhelms every single one of them with joy, bringing the hope of God's salvation. Think about those shepherds out in the field. If I were one of them, I'd be pretty scared, right? Following an angel's command to go meet the Savior, Christ the Lord. What would they find? Well, they found a baby. And a baby's not very scary. 
Now Mary and Joseph bring this newborn to the temple. No doubt they thought the shepherd's visit to them in Bethlehem was kind of surprising. Now meeting Simeon and Anna will cause even greater wonderment. For these aged truth-tellers will boldly announce that through this child, God's salvation is being known and known to all. In Luke, those who first receive the good news of Jesus and those who are called to proclaim it are a beautifully varied bunch of people. And so are we. It's hard to imagine the vast mix of people who are listening to this sermon today. We are 145 different congregations in the Minneapolis Area Synod, worshiping in eight different languages. Though not all congregations will be using this service, and I'm pretty sure not every congregational member will tune in today, our worship community will still be incredibly diverse in age, class, gender, race, sexual orientation, talents, passions, faith, doubt, hope, despair, all. And that's why Christmas and its message is so unbelievably powerful. For the gospel comes to all people. God's salvation is for everyone. Most of us today are worshiping from our living rooms, watching this service on a screen. Sadly, most of us worship from home on Christmas Eve. No tree-lit sanctuary, no room filled to the brim with people holding candles and singing Silent Night. And yet, the first announcement of Jesus' birth wasn't made in a temple, not in a sanctuary of any kind. It was proclaimed in the fields, out there where the shepherds were keeping their flocks at night. And shepherds were probably from the bottom rung of the social ladder. Still, they were the first to hear the good news. What is more, in the words of Craig Satterley, the shepherds weren't just outsiders. He writes, spend enough time in the field as a shepherd, shunned by decent and religious folk, disappointed by God, or overwhelmed by grief, and we stop caring that we are outsiders. We give up trying to get inside the religion. We even give up on God and just get on with life. But God does not give up on us. God, sing, God sends angels to the people who have given up on God. Oh dear friends, 2020 may have felt like a year in the wilderness. So many unknowns, so much waiting, cut off from physical touch, only you know how this year has affected your faith. But do know this, you are not alone if it has. And more importantly, know this as well, even if you feel like you've given up on God, God has not given up on you. The power of the Christmas story, the power of Christmas, is the inbreaking of God's grace into every corner of our world. Whether we are strong or weak, recognized or forgotten, fervent in our faith or struggling even to believe, God brings good news to us right where we are. But there's more. <laughs> The Christmas story is also filled with the most unlikely prophets and witnesses, people, ordinary folks, called and empowered by the Spirit, outcast shepherds talking about all they've seen and heard, an unmarried woman singing a Magnificat full of good news to the poor and hungry, blessing 
for the sorrowful and lonely. So today, as you sit in your home, know this: God can meet you there with good news, and God can fill you with the Spirit to empower you to witness to God's love. Already in the first two chapters of Luke, the gospel writer makes it very clear that the Spirit empowers witnesses from among the poor, the aged, the young, the powerless, and this will become even clearer in Luke's second volume, the Acts of the Apostles, when the Spirit is poured out upon all flesh, and the young will see visions, and the old will dream dreams. And if the Spirit of God, there at Christmas, there at Pentecost, continues to work through every time and age, and if the Spirit's chosen instrument is the human person, the human body, then witnesses and prophets are here among us today. And do not be surprised if that witness is you. Yes, you, sitting on the couch in your pajamas, not quite sure if your faith is a glowing candle or a dimly burning wick, because it's the spirit that inflames, inspires, and empowers. Oh, and though this human, this pandemic greatly limits the movement of our human bodies. Don't go there. Don't touch that. We can still use them to bear witness. We can use our hands to write a letter to a person who is lonely. We can use our voice to call our legislator, appealing for extended unemployment benefits. We can use our fingers to scroll through the ELCA website and contribute to the hunger appeal, or we can show our beautiful faces on another Zoom call, maybe for Bible study or for your church's committee that is working towards racial justice. God can use each of us. God's hands in the world. In addition to 2020 being the year of the pandemic, it also marked the 50th anniversary of our church's decision to ordain women back in 1970. My first call as a pastor 38 years ago now was to Zion Lutheran Church in Iowa City. Back then, the Iowa bishop gathered all the state's female pastors together once a year for support and encouragement. And the first years, the early 80s, we could have all fit in a phone booth. But though small, it was an amazing gathering. There was April Larson, who went on to become the first female bishop in the ELCA, and Connie Kleingartner, who became one of the first female seminary professors. I especially remember one conversation we shared. One of the more soft-spoken women finally said, I just look forward to that day when the church doesn't see me as a problem. I am a gift to the church. Those early days, we were often seen as problems. Problems for bishops who couldn't help us find calls. Problems because we didn't always fit the mold of what pastoral authority looked like. I am a gift, my colleague said, a gift to the church. Well, dear friends, you are gifts through Jesus Christ. Like Simeon and Anna with shepherds and a young mother, you are gifts from God to this church and to this world. And God sends you forth, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to be God's hands and voice in the world. Oh, I wish I had a crystal ball and could tell you what the year ahead will bring. 
I wish I could predict when vaccines will be available for everyone. I wish I could tell you when herd immunity will make it okay for your grandkids to spend the night at your house, make it okay for you to open up your restaurant or small business, make it okay for you to get together with your high school friends at a coffee shop, okay to hug all your siblings in Christ at a wonderful worship service. But I can't. You and I, we know, we will continue in the wilderness, the fields of uncertainty for a while. And you may, and I may, be tempted to give up. But God doesn't give up on you. God is here here now in this place with us to bring good news to us again and again and again. And God's love is also with us and in us through the power of the Spirit that we might share it with others. Amen. We'd like to introduce a song to you, a song from the brand new Lutheran hymnal supplement called All Creation Sings. And let's learn the words of the song together. It goes like this. Could it be, Could it be that we are called for such a time as this? That's the song. So I'll sing it for you one time and you can listen and learn how it goes. It sounds like this. Could it be that we are called for such a time as this? Could it be that we are called for such a time as this? That's it. Let's sing that together. Here we go. Could it be that we are called for such a time as this Could it be that we are called For such a time as this All right, let's try verse 2 And let's sing You Are Called Here we go Could it be that you are called For such a time as this could it be that you are called for such a time as this? All right, I am called. Could it be that I am called for such a time as this? Yeah. Could it be that I am called for such a time? One more time, we are called. Could it be that we are called for such a time as this? Could it be that we are called for such a time as this? Three more. For such a time as this. For such a time as this. It is you, loving God, who lights our path with hope. Your word, Jesus, is salvation. In the Christ light, draw all to the manger, to gather in wonder with the shepherds. In the Christ light, draw all to the manger, to kneel in reverence with the wise ones. In the Christ light, draw all to the manger, to sing for joy with the angels. In the Christ light, illumine our world. Bind the wounds of injustice. Fill the hungry with good things and turn the world around. It is you, loving God, who meets us on our way. In the light of Jesus, show the world your love. Amen. Let us continue in prayer using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now may you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the enthusiasm of the shepherds, and the everlasting love of Jesus, our Savior, our Christ, and our Lord. Almighty God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold throughout the heavens, there shone a is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Oh, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morning.